Fast Guy is an interesting little indie game developed by Fast Guy Interactive where you take on the role of some poor asshole who finds himself trapped deep in the ocean after his submarine crashes. From this point you basically just spend your time searching the randomly generated ocean floor for the nine pieces of your broken submarine before you can repair the damn thing and return to the surface. At its most basic form, Fast Guy is pretty much Minecraft underwater, but in a lot of ways it's also a very unique and interesting title, focusing on a theme and setting that is seldom seen in first person games. The first thing you might notice is that Fast Guy isn't the best looking game in the world, it runs in Java and is completely devoid of the typical bells and whistles you'd expect to see in a PC exclusive, though despite this it is still quite visually appealing. Some of the last areas you'll see in the game are both serene and spooky at the same time. There is a huge contrast between areas as you move deeper and deeper towards the ocean floor. Luckily the controls are smooth and responsive, allowing for fast movements and multiple jumping to help you navigate cliffs and large drops more quickly. You can also create a handheld propeller to help you navigate a lot quicker. Now as I said just earlier, Fast Guy is really little more than Minecraft underwater and right off the bat it's easy to see where the game has taken these influences. Much like Minecraft, you need resources to survive. From healing items in the form of fish and vegetables, which you can also cook to boost their effectiveness, through to crafting equipment and weaponry, using iron, gold, copper, and manganese ore, which can be drilled from deposits found in the environment or also inside randomly located chests. It's pretty impressive the amount of things that you can create, and the developers have made sure that the ingredients needed feel practical and aren't generally too hard to obtain. For the most part, this system works pretty well, but you will find yourself just grinding for resources every now and then. Your main base of operations, literally, is a small outpost that you encounter early on in the game, and this is where you'll spend the majority of your time, usually crafting new items and upgrading your gear, but also because it's the only place you can refill your air supply. Whenever you're out walking around on the ocean floor, your oxygen gauge is constantly dropping, meaning that the further you go, the more dangerous the situation becomes. Aside from oxygen, you have to be mindful of how deep you're going, as the deeper you go, the greater the water pressure becomes. Upgrading your suit's air supply and helmet will allow you to breathe longer and survive in deeper depths. As well as that, you've also got to keep an eye on your hunger meter and make sure you don't starve to death, and if that wasn't enough, the game also uses a day and night cycle. Like Minecraft, once again, moving around at night time can be really dangerous, as it seems to be the only time that predators want to attack you. Initially, the only things you'll be up against are hammerhead sharks and maybe the odd barracuda, but by the time you're getting the last few pieces of the submarine, you'll be going up against eerily glowing jellyfish, anglerfish, and even giant octopuses. Avoiding these guys once they're after you is practically impossible, and the only way to deal with them is with a spear gun, the only weapon that the game gives you. Again, ammo for the spear gun needs to be crafted from resources recovered in the environment, and the gun itself has something of a slow firing rate, making it a little bit tricky to get used to. Quite often you just have to stand still, wait for the enemy to come towards you, and hope you can get a shot off before they can take a chunk out of you. This all sounds like a lot of stuff to contend with, and yeah, I guess it kinda is, but it's not too hard to pick up, and most of the stuff will soon become second nature. Now, the problems I have with this game aren't huge, more so they're just the things I think the game is lacking. For starters, messing around with your base feels really underutilized. You're given very little options in crafting your base and also very little incentive to in the first place. I mean, once you've built all the little different workbenches to create all the items you'll need, you'll really only go back there to refill your air supply. Being able to just relax in your base and watch all the aquatic life swim by the window is downright cathartic. And a few more customization options with things like furniture and layouts would have been really great. You can play the game in a sandbox mode, which removes the story elements and just lets you explore at your own pace, but it's still pretty short, and once you've built some of the better items like the submarine, for instance, there's not really any other reason to play it, unless you just want to kill some time. I think all up, you're probably looking at about 2-3 to three hours for the adventure mode, if that, and then maybe another couple of hours of the sandbox mode before you'll probably get bored with it. Navigation could use a few tweaks as well, there's no compass or anything like that, and it can be kind of hard to get your bearings. You often have to pause the game and check the map screen to see your whereabouts, but even then it can be hard getting where you want to go. Being able to drop waypoints down on the map would have been a godsend. Also, whilst I do think the game looks and sounds really good for the most part, I think they could have done a bit more with the sound design. When you hit the bottom of the ocean floor, for instance, I just wish they had worked on making it a bit more distinct. There's times when there's just basically no sound whatsoever, and it can seem a bit bare bones. Lastly, there are some minor problems with the user interface, particularly when crafting items. Among other things, it doesn't actually tell you what some of the ingredients are. 
it just shows this small thumbnail image of what the item is, and you kind of have to guesstimate what it is from that. I mean, a simple text pop-up would alleviate this problem entirely. I should also mention that I've read online that a lot of people have had issues getting this game running in the first place. Now, I had a few problems when I first tried to get it working, and I found that uninstalling Java completely and reinstalling it cleanly fixed this problem. It's not something you want to worry about, but at least there are possible solutions. Overall, Fast Guy has a lot of potential, and those moments when you're just cruising around exploring the ocean floor as the local flora and fauna go about their business are downright mediatory. I started a new game the other night after I got home from work, and then the next thing I knew it was 1am in the morning, and there I still was, riding around in a submarine looking for sunken treasure chests. It's just one of those games. And I still didn't even mention half of the features the game has on offer, like the way your blood can attract nearby predators, how you can drop down drills to mine for resources automatically, or the multitude of cool little items and gadgets you can craft to help you survive. Fast Guy could easily be dismissed as Minecraft Underwater, and it's true it does take a lot of those elements and run with it, but it does have a great atmosphere and lots of original content on offer for people who can get into it. It's available on Steam if you want to check it out.